spiritual leader personally motivated by heavenly visions. She would become the embodiment of the people's nationalism, as well as the French Restorationist movement. Joan of Arc. It had been more than 300 years since the Crusaders were sent by wealthy Byzantine politicians to the Middle East under the pretext of liberation of Judea from oppressive Islamic powers. In the Middle Ages, the majority of the French population was illiterate. Bound to the land, in a condition of debt bondage, known as serfdom. Owning the land elevated the average person to nobility. Politically motivated marriage and breeding between England and France had caused confusion regarding the rule of various lands as political groups grappled for power during the Hundred Years' War. Prior to the second half of these wars, several prophecies foretold that an armed young maid would liberate France. In eastern France, Joan of Arc's father was a landowner and small-time politician. Joan heard voices and saw visions of several holy deities in her childhood, which told her she would join them in heaven after she completed some earthly duties. One of them was St. Catherine, another Archangel Michael, and of course, the Holy Virgin Mary. St. Catherine of Alexandria, slayer of the allegorical dragon, was a virgin princess who was literate and scholarly, which was, for women on the multicultural Mediterranean island, actually quite in vogue. Hypatia and Cleopatra would also study in Alexandria. She converted to Christianity when she was 14 and converted many others, including the emperor's wife, all of whom would be subsequently killed. Emperor Maxinius had her scourged, then imprisoned, then threatened to kill her if she did not marry him which she refused, so he sent her to be nudely, publicly, slowly tortured and mutilated on a spiked breaking wheel. A clause in torture stated that if the device failed for some reason, the victim could go free because of divine intervention. Upon her touch, the wheel broke. So they beheaded her instead. Rather than blood, a white fluid ran from her neck. Her body was taken to a mountaintop, now called Mount Catherine, where it was preserved. In her memory, the monastery of St. Catherine still exists there. It holds the world's oldest, longest operating library. Later, the ancient library of Alexandria was burned to humiliate and infuriate Cleopatra. Archangel Michael also appeared before Joan. He as well slayed winged serpents or dragons or dinosaurs depending on your beliefs. He is the angel of mercy and is sacred to a huge range of religions and cults. Needing no introduction, Mary also appeared and told her to ask the king for arms against England and Burgundy. However, the current king was the son of a madman. Would he take Joan's visions and voices? It is well known that Joan did not fit any mental illness diagnosis, especially not schizophrenia, even as it manifests in teenagers. The young French king would order armor to be made especially for her and he told his leading commanders that they should now follow her directions. After one battle, the Duke of Alencon stated that the leadership and direction of Joan was such that the victory at Orleans was hers. As a peasant, she would have spoken the vernacular Latin of footmen and smiths and would have been vocationally inclined to get hands-on with gunpowder and weapons. She was not distinct from the men she inspired in battle, unlike the knights who would not belittle themselves to learn from the other 90% of the population. During the Hundred Years' War, standard were knights, horses, and swords, but novel gunpowder increased cannon fire, 
and like a youth to technology, her learning curve outpaced older modes, upsetting classical opponent strategy. Joan's first battle was her successful siege of Orleans with 10 men against 4,000 in June of 29, which was the most firepower ever used in history. The most significant act for Joan was leading her army deep into English-controlled territory to see Charles VII crowned King of France. Joan went on to successfully siege five more cities. Her troops won open field battles at three other locations, and more than 30 cities surrendered without a fight. During one battle, Joan was shot by an arrow in view of all. While she was being nursed, the French faltered and began retreating. Joan returned to the front and declared, there should be no retreat. All parties were shocked and the French were victorious. More than once, the sight of Joan's banner in battle was so demoralizing that enemies cowered and had to be taunted to fight. Joan was only defeated four times when she was outgunned. The political mess in France directly attributed to Joan's lack of supplies. After being captured by the independent Anglo-Burgundian forces, she was imprisoned in a tower at the Castle of Rouen and was later sold to the English as a POW. Multiple rescue missions failed, and Joan attempted to escape more than once, even leaping 70 feet from the tower to be found unconscious later. She said that the voices had warned her to be careful of the leap. In prison, she was under tricky inquisition, though her scholarly answers stupefied all. Whenever you want. The Lady of Burgundy publicly supported Joan and even testified to her virginity in court. Guards at the prison and lords were incessantly attempting to rape Joan, so she regularly guarded her virginity by donning her armor. Whenever you're ready. In 1431, she was assassinated by British and political forces, led by the Cardinal Bishop Cauchon. She was burned at the stake for heresy because her armor was considered cross-dressed. Had she been raped, she would have been charged with witchcraft. The British also believed this 19-year-old warrior must have been possessed by the devil, and in the words of British medievalist Beverly Boyd, the trial was meant by the English crown to be a ploy to get rid of a bizarre prisoner of war with maximum embarrassment to their enemies. To prevent tales of her escape, Joan's charred corpse was put on view to the public, and then burned again to ash and thrown into the Seine River. English Bishop Pierre Cochon had convicted an innocent in pursuit of a secular vendetta. The Hundred Years' War would end relatively soon after, with King Charles VII remaining enthroned. Joan of Arc was cleared of heresy in a retrial in the 1450s, which would instead convict the bishop of heresy for his secular vendetta. In a spirit of contrition and reconciliation, in 1922, a statue of Joan of Arc was placed in Winchester Cathedral, diagonally facing the Cardinal's tomb. Joan faithfully fulfilled her destiny to rest eternally with Mary, Archangel Michael, and Saint Catherine. The vision of a holy woman in armor still speaks to us hundreds of years later. It was a very popular choice of the 2018 Met Gala. What does this teenage girl teach us about self-confidence and empowerment? About trusting the truth in our own inner voices? About humility and tenacity? respecting our own visions.